Welcome, dearly beloved. Today is the 16th Sunday of Trinity. It's a pleasure to be with you again today. As many of you know, we just had our Wounded Healers Conference. It turned out to be a really excellent weekend. We had wonderful times of prayer ministry and healing, and we also had great instruction and times of worship and fellowship. And it, I just want to say an extra thank you to all those who participated in helping and in volunteering. It was a really lovely time, and um, everybody was really blessed. So thank you to everybody. I'm going to open up our service in a word of prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your gracious involvement in our lives, for your wonderful love that is just so um, unbelievable and so unimaginable, and yet it's true. Thank you for that. Thank you for the gift of Jesus and the gift of your Holy Spirit. Bless us now as we give you praise and exalt your great name. In Jesus' name, amen. Our opening text today is from Psalm 43, verse 3. O oh, send out your light and your truth, that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Amen. Let's have our opening song. confess our sins to Almighty God. Together we pray. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, 
there is no health in us. O oh Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O oh most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. I'd now like you to turn in your Book of Com Acna Book of Common Prayer to Psalm 54 on page 336, where you may turn in your Bibles, Psalm 54, page 336. Save me, O God, for your name's sake, and avenge me in your strength. Hear my prayer, O God, and hearken to the words of my mouth, for the arrogant have risen up against me, and tyrants who do not have God before their eyes seek after my life. Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is he who upholds my life. He shall repay the evil of my enemies and destroy them. O oh, destroy them in your faithfulness. A free will offering will I give to you and praise your name, O oh Lord, because it is good. For he has delivered me out of all my trouble and my eye has seen the ruin of my enemies. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Now I'd like you to turn in your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 31, verses 10 to 31. That's Proverbs chapter 31, verses 10 to 31. And that's the text I'm going to preach from today. Starting at verse 10. An excellent wife who can find. She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm. All the days of her life she seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the ships of the merchant. She brings her food from afar. She rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and portions for her maidens. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She dresses herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands to the distaff and her hand holds the spindle. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household for all her household are clothed in scarlet. She makes bed coverings for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. She delivers sashes to the merchant. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household, and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands, and let her works praise her in the gates. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You can keep your Bibles open to that passage, and I'm gonna start in a word of prayer. Lord, your word is precious to us. We thank you for your word, and we pray that you would speak to our hearts through your word today, in Jesus' name, amen. So in our church, we haven't spent a lot of time in the book of Proverbs. It's a wonderful book. I encourage you to go home and read the whole book if you have time, and just dwell in that book for a while. It's full of rich, wise sayings. And um, throughout the book of Proverbs, we learn that wisdom is for both men and women. We're gonna dive into that a little bit today, but before we do that, 
I'm going to talk to you a, l a little bit about the story that I uh, that I know about that um, once happened to this woman, and um, she was about to be asked if by her boyfriend if she would marry him. And before he popped the question to her, he memorized that whole portion of scripture and he quoted it to her just before he got down on one knee and proposed to her. And I thought that was such a sweet story. And she said that it was actually very sweet. And um, she said yes to him and they got married and they um, have been married for, I don't know, 40 years or more. Um, so they've um, developed a really good re relationship together. But um, I just thought I would tell you that sweet little story about um, that passage of scripture. And I think about that often when I read that passage of scripture. And um, this is a text that is all about a wise woman, but it's also about wisdom. And the poem was actually written to men to show them what an excellent and wise wife would look like so that they would know how precious she is and how valuable she is and how to treasure her well. And it shows us a beautiful picture of the relationship that this husband and wife enjoys together and how the wife blesses her husband and her family and how her husband praises her and treats her with great dignity. Isn't that a great way to have a marriage relationship? If, if only we all had this ideal, wonderful relationship. Well, this is what, the, the Bible actually has an ideal marriage relationship, and it's not the Hollywood version of what an ideal marriage relationship is. The Hollywood version of what an ideal relationship is is probably this beautiful blonde woman with a certain type of figure and this hunk of a man with a certain type of figure and... They do certain types of actions and they live happily ever after. Well, the Bible has a very different version of what a blessed marriage is and you just heard it. It's very beautiful. And um, we also see examples of a blessed marriage in the New Testament, especially in Ephesians. You could also look in, in Colossians for a blessed marriage. Um, but the Old Testament also has that. And Proverbs chapter 31 is one of those places. And so the book of Proverbs was originally written with men in mind to teach them about living wisely. However, just because the book was written to them doesn't mean that wisdom isn't also for women or that women can't learn from the book about wisdom. They certainly can and they should. In fact, Proverbs 31 clearly shows us this. The character of the woman in it, in chapter 31, displays a life that is full of the wisdom that the rest of the book is talking about. So it's like the ideal person that the rest of the book is trying to point towards. So she is beautiful and she is an example of a wise life. And the book of Proverbs shows us through her that, that actually wisdom is for all of the people of God. It's for both men and women alike. So women, you should feel confident that you are not in any way at all excluded from the wisdom that the rest of the book has, and nor are you excluded from the wisdom of God. In fact, women are represented as the ideal portrait of wisdom at the end of the book. Not that they are the ideal, it's just that the woman character is used as the ideal sample. So another interesting thing that this text has in it is that it has an acrostic poem in it. And so that means that the first letter of every verse with, begins with the next letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So if you were reading it in Hebrew, you would see this plainly. It was originally written in Hebrew, not in English. 
And so it's sort of like as if we were going from A to Z in the English language, except going from A to Z in the Hebrew language. So we can't see that in English, but that's what's going on in Hebrew. So, so verse, it's like verse 10 starts with A, verse 11 starts with B, verse 12 starts with C, and then it goes all the way down to the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It would be like Aleph, Bay, I, I can't remember my gam, uh, I can't remember my Hebrew alphabet. <laughs> there we know. We know how bad my Hebrew is. Um, but um, yeah, so you get the point anyway. And so there's a point to this alpha, alphabet pattern. It demonstrates that this poem is covering the whole range of what wisdom looks like. And it's doing this by giving us snapshot pictures of what a wise woman looks like in all kinds of different situations in her life. And it's not saying that a woman has to do absolutely every single one of these things in order to be wise. But actually, even if she does just one of these things, if she lives out any of these things, she is living wisely. And the purpose of the verses in this poem is to show us pictures of what wisdom looks like in a life so that we can envision it. And as you heard, when I read the scripture, some of the qualities of this woman include that she does good things that benefit the whole family. That's wise. She is precious. She is trustworthy. She has no lack of gain. She does good and not harm. She's a hard worker. She is skilled in her work. She is diligent and finds ways to provide for the needs of her family. She makes sure that they are clothed and warm and well fed. She takes care of her servants. She makes business decisions. And she makes wise choices with family finances. She is diligent. She is strong. She's profitable, generous. She's an important part of her husband's success. And she is prepared for adverse circumstances. She is dignified. She teaches kindness and she speaks wisdom. She's not lazy, but she works hard. She has strength and dignity. She's confident about the future and has no need to fear. Her husband is respected in the city. She is excellent in all that she does. Her children bless her and so does her husband. And above all, what's extremely noted about this woman is that she fears the Lord. Her works are commendable and she is even worthy of public honor. Now, of course, the poem tells you this in much more beautiful words than the way I just told you it. But that's, the S, that, that's many of the uh, points of what is, is written in that poem. And from this woman's example, we, both men and women, whether you're single or whether you're married, all of us, we can learn to be wise. We can be generous, we can be kind, diligent, and strong. We can learn to work hard and be good with money, and so on. We can also learn from her that wisdom, above all, is deeply rooted in our relationship with God. This woman is a woman who fears the Lord. That's what verse 30 says. And fearing the Lord means that she has a deep respect for God. Her, she offers him true worship. And she trusts him. This woman honors God in how she lives. And her wisdom is the result of her proper relationship with God. And we can be encouraged that as we grow in our relationship with God, wise living is going to flow out of that relationship that we have rooted in God. It will naturally because God is wise and he will lead us in his wise ways. God is a source of wisdom and so we will gain wisdom right from the source. So now there are some specific things that both men and women can learn from this text and I'm going to speak mostly about marriage because this woman is a wife. So in verse 10 it says this, an excellent wife who can find? She is far more precious than jewels. 
So some of you men, you actually have wise wives like this. You have wonderful wives. And your wives need to be treated as far more precious than jewels. Also, a wise woman is deserving of a wise man who fears the Lord. So the scriptures encourage us all to be wise in our relationships and before God. The text is also asking an obvious question, an excellent wife who can find. There are excellent qualities that women have that fear the Lord. And so find a wife like that. But the text also begs the question that of who is perfect. Of course, no one is perfect. So we have to recognize that. The text is showing us an ideal woman. The, this is the kind of like the, the standard. So if we all know what the standard is, then we know what to live up to. So the encouragement is to view our wives as precious. Men and women alike should treat their spouse as precious. Also men, when your wife does display wisdom, this is a wonderful benefit to your life. Verse 29 suggests that it is appropriate for you to praise her for her wisdom. In verse 29, the husband says to his wife these words, Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Aren't those beautiful words, kind words to speak to your spouse? We all need to speak like this to one another, but especially when we are in a marriage relationship, it helps to build up godly and kind and loving relationships, especially in marriage. So husbands, praise your wife for her wisdom and treat her with dignity and respect. And if she is a wise woman, she will treat you likewise. Women, whether you are single or married, remember that this passage is an ideal. It is not obviously where we all are at. So have some grace with yourself. Our goal is to seek to have the woman, the wisdom that this woman has. But remember that it is also the goal for the men. The men also have an ideal to live up to, godly standards for us all. And women, if you are not married and you want to marry, marry a wise man who treats you with dignity and th so that this, marry a, a man that treats his wife with the dignity that this man in this text treats his wife with. Look for a man like that and be the kind of woman that he would want to be with. But remember also that no man is perfect. None of us meet that ideal ever. And so our lives have to be full of grace with one another. Also, all of us need to keep in mind that one of the key verses in this passage, which is so fitting for our very visual culture today, is verse 30. And it says this, it says, Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. The woman in this passage is beautiful not because of her outer beauty. You notice that nothing was said about her outer beauty, but you knew she was a beautiful woman when you heard me read the text. And there was something about her that was beautiful. And what was beautiful about her was her godly character. Godly character is what makes you beautiful. This woman fears the Lord. And she walks in wisdom. So know that when you walk in wisdom and a deep relationship with God, that you are absolutely beautiful. You are gorgeous. Godly character makes you beautiful. Another thing to keep in mind is that just as the woman's 
character in this passage is an ideal so is the character of her husband so let's let's remember to be gracious with each other just as god has been exceptionally gracious with us in christ jesus as we walk with god over time we continue to walk with god we're going to grow in wisdom and this is something that we can continue to grow in as we continue to walk with jesus who is the wisdom of God. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 24 tells us that Jesus is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Isn't that great? So as we walk with Jesus, Jesus will powerfully enable us to be wise. Let's walk with Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you that he gives us the power to be wise and the ability to walk with you. And Lord, we pray that you would give us wisdom for daily living and that you would deepen our relationships with you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's have our next song. please join me as we join Christians across the world and throughout the centuries in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles Creed. Together we confess. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. And now as our Savior taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, you have taught us that without love, all our deeds are worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of charity, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let's now have our offertory song. thank you for these gifts of your people. I pray your blessing upon these gifts, and I pray that you would multiply these gifts for use in your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. All things come from you, O Lord, and and of your own have we given you. Amen. If you are wondering how to give at St. Andrews, you can go online to our website at www.standrewschurch.ca and you can give online. There are a variety of options there or you are able to give in person at two o'clock at our in-person in service, in service. Will you now please join me in the general thanksgiving? Together we pray. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. 
And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Receive this blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.